We're gonna make some pulled chicken. And most of the ingredients are right there. I'm using smoked paprika, some cumin, oregano, lemon juice, garlic, brown sugar, beer, a little water, Worcestershire sauce, ketchup, a little cornstarch, in case it's a little bit, you know, loose, you want it to be, you don't want it to be watery, or whatever's in there to stick to the chicken. Some onions, did I say Dijon mustard, and some hot sriracha hot chili sauce. So, and what I'm using, most people are using the breast. I can't stand the breast, especially in something like this. I want flavor, and the chicken legs or chicken thighs will give off the best. And I'm using chicken legs because chicken cooked on the bone has more flavor. So it's a little bit more work at the end, but you know what? That's the price you pay to have something good. So, if you have a skillet, some people just throw everything into the uh, crock pot. And, uh, but what I'm gonna do is just brown the chicken up with the onions and garlic a little bit. And I, I could do it in a skillet, which uh, most people will have to do. But, since I have the, uh, this all cleared uh, crock pot, it allows me to take out the inside, put it on the burner. That's really cool. I like that. And then I could do the cooking in there and not have another pot to clean. So I'm going to put, that's it, put the flame in there, put that, and in a couple of minutes I'm going to throw the chicken with the uh, onions and garlic, which I diced up, and then put everything in there, put it in the crock pot, and just let it cook. So it's relatively simple as long as you get the right amount of all the little additives. So I'm pretty good at that. You know, this recipe, I've never, not that I've never done it before, but I, as I go, I measure. And I measure, if it's a little light on something, after I taste it, I add more. So when the recipe is finished, you'll have the exact measurements, exact weights of everything, which makes cooking a little bit more easier for someone who's not, you know, too sure of what to do. Because you can look at a lot of recipes, the ones I really dislike are the ones that say uh, one medium pepper, uh, one large onion. You know, it, it's important to know the exact amount. Not as critical as in baking where you must be 100% with your measurements, but still, it's nice to know. And uh, we'll put a little salt in there. So that's it, I'm gonna throw the chicken in there. I don't need any oil because the legs, I pulled the skin off because we don't want all that fat in there. But there's enough fat that's still left on the chicken legs where I don't have to add anything. So what you would do if you don't have this type of crock pot, you just take this, what I'm doing, and put it in your saute pan cook it up a little bit and then throw it in there. I think we'll come out with a better flavor. So actually there's no reason to waste uh, any more film on this, which all I'm gonna do is just cook this up a little in here, add all the ingredients, put it in the crock pot, cover the lid, and I set it for four hours on high. I mean, high in a crock pot is nothing near rapid boiling in a, on the stove. So high to me is still low cooking. 
Okay. Like I said, we need a little uh, salt and pepper in there. So I'm using my, I get a mixture here. I make it, you know, a little salt and pepper and uh, sea salt. If you can, I don't know if you can notice the color of the salt is really not that pure white. So it's not as refined as the stuff you usually buy, which I think is better for you. Okay, that's it. I'll add everything. In a few minutes, I'm going to add everything and we'll look at it then, and then that's it. Uh, what I did was put in all of the dry seasonings, as you can see. Just it'll bring out the flavor. I don't know if it really matters, but when you sweat them up a little, more flavor comes out. But the amount of time that it's in the clock pot, maybe it doesn't make a difference. Well, but I did this anyway. Okay. So we're coming along good. This has been about six minutes I've been doing this. And I'm going to wait another few more minutes before I add everything else. This is also going to quicken, help quicken the time in the crock pot since you're already heating up everything. Well, now it's time to add everything else. I've lowered the flame. I'm going to add, first of all, I'm using beer. And not much more liquid. You know why? The chicken gives off moisture after it cooks. And there's one thing that we don't want is to have excess moisture in there. Because that means that uh, it's going to make it more difficult. You're going to have to, <laughs> the flavor is in the liquid. If you have too much, you're going to have to reduce it. So that's the ketchup, the brown sugar. Now, the lemon juice, the Worcestershire, the Dijon. Now, a couple of hours from now, I'm going to taste this. And if it's, if it tastes good, then I did a good job on the herbs and all of the, the spices and the, the amount of sugar and lemon juice I added to give it a little tang and be a little bit hot. So that means I have to add the sriracha hot sauce because I do want this to have a nice bite. Now this stuff is great. Everybody it's used quite a bit now in cooking. 20 years ago you really didn't see it but today in all of the kitchens that I go to when I travel with the uh, catering I see sriracha, sriracha hot sauce on the, the shelves there which means it's used a lot. So this is good. I didn't add any water. There was only the one can of beer, which was, I have to put down the, the size of the can, because you don't want to put too large of a can. And, and that's it. Now we'll go into the crock pot. And uh, like I said, in about two hours, I'm going to see, check the flavoring because this thing is very hot. I mean, it's, it's, I could have brought it to a boil, but that's it. So now we are there, and that's where. We're going to finish everything right in there. So I'll see you in a couple of hours and hopefully it's going to be good. So it's been like two hours and uh, still a lot of liquid in there. 
and the chicken's not falling off the bone yet. And what I like to do is just give a taste. It gives me an indication of how the flavor is going to be, which I like. Another hour has passed. And I can already see I got a lot of liquid here. So what I'm going to do when this is all done, put the liquid into a skillet and reduce it. Because with the amount of chicken, we don't need all that liquid. And that liquid is where all the flavor is. And you don't want to lose it. Well, it's been less than four hours. This chicken is done. And we have a lot of liquid, so I'll just take it out. And after it cools, it'll come apart nice and easy. And then the rest of the liquid I'm going to reduce. So that it's just enough to hold this meat together. What you don't want is a dry, dry shredded chicken. It has to have a sauce because if you eat it, just pull it apart and eat it. It has no taste and it's shredded, dried out chicken. So that's why what is left in here you need. So we have all of this. I'm going to let that cool down for about an hour or so. Now what's in here I could reduce in the pot, but I'm not because most people don't have this. So we're going to reduce it in a large pan to quicken the process. That's what we have right here. And this will not take long and I'm sure I'm going to add some cornstarch to this because I don't want it to be watery after it's reduced and it certainly will be watery. <clears throat> if I have to make any adjustments in the flavor I will do it after it's reduced. So we'll just turn this flame up and cook this down to a point and we'll know how much we need. You'll know how much it's going to be because I'll be exact with the amount of uh, chicken. We'll use everything that's left in here not to waste any of the flavor. All I can tell you is that there is a nice aroma right now in the kitchen. And just to test this, to see if I have to add anything else to it. It's going to get stronger as it's reduced. It has a pleasant taste. Not sweet, not tangy, and it's going to get stronger. So just hang in there until we're done. So we got that much left of the juice. And this is all the chicken. 
So I'm not shredding it apart with my fingers because this will all shred up right in here. And just looking at the amount of mm, liquid that's in there, that looks pretty good. So we just take the fork. The flame is on low. This will take a few minutes. Just keep on going like so, pulling it, pushing it. We'll shut the flame, <laughs> shut the flame off. Shut the camera until I get done, and then we'll look at it. See if it needs anything, which I don't think it does. Now, I'm happy with the way it looks, except for one thing. If you notice, there's liquid down there. There's no liquid on top. So... I want this to be uniform. How do we do that? It's very simple. You take, for this amount, one tablespoon of cornstarch, and you don't have to moisten it with water. I'll show you how. Watch what happens. We don't want to add any more liquid. Besides, it's not a sauce, and this will bring it together. We still have a flame under there, which you need. And if you notice, it doesn't take much heat to allow that cornstarch to do what you want look down now you don't really see the moisture because the cornstarch just pulled it all in and now when you put this pulled chicken onto a bun it's gonna look like so now if you like you can add scallions to this, cilantro, but notice the finish. It's not all dried out looking, which the chicken should look like after cooking for so many hours. So we have enough. All the flavor is in there, and this thing is done. That makes quite a bit. A little bit spicy. I'm not going to put any more salt. So you have to taste it. Remember the salt will bring out the flavor even more. But that's enough. I feel the heat from the uh, the smoked paprika which is good and the flavorings of everything else so I think it worked out pretty good this time I yeah, hope you enjoy it